Hey guys, so welcome back to your next class of Catalyst Concepts. So in the previous class, we looked at something called Newland's periodic table. Basically, Newland's law was about octaves, right? Uh, every eighth repetition will have the same properties. Now, we discussed why it was problematic. And I said, we're going to come to the next one. So today, we're going to talk about the main contributor to the periodic table okay the main scientist who actually made something that was like really relevant and led to what we today see as a new modern periodic table so uh, there's a scientist scientist named dimitri mendeleev okay i mean the spelling differs from book to book but mendeleev was his name so mendeleev took a similar approach to what a new land did. Okay. He took the same atomic weight approach. Okay. He also arranged elements in increasing order of atomic weight. So this is uh, one similarity for both of this, but the way he structured it was a little bit different. Okay, so how he did it was, he made a table. Okay, he made a table in which he had two types of partitions. Okay, vertical and horizontal, pretty much like how that was. But within each vertical column, there were two parts. Okay, each vertical column was divided into two like this so this was called a this was called b okay same way for each vertical column a b like that okay now all of these vertical columns they are called as groups and everything that came horizontally right uh, these were called periods so the groups were numbered with roman numerals roman numeral one two three four like that okay and each one was again divided into two a and b so i will call this as one a and one b two a and two b something like that okay now the uh, these horizontally they were numbered using regular number one two three four like that all right So again, when he arranged these elements, what he said was, if you arrange them uh, in a specific way of increasing order of uh, atomic weight, they'll actually form common patterns down the group, okay, in the vertical manner, meaning everything in the first group will have similar properties, okay, 1A, all these elements will have the same properties all of these will also have the same properties typically he said one a and one b will have similar properties a and b are kind of related but not the same and a within a all of them have the same property again same goes with two a will have the same properties How he made these groups was based on the oxides. Okay. So for example, any element in A, what type of oxide does it make? So if the symbol is R, the first group had R2O. Okay. So for example, hydrogen comes over here. So if it is hydrogen, it makes H2O, right? When reacting with oxygen. That is what he said. The next one is RO. 
so each group was based on how it reacts with oxygen so in a way we can say ki this grouping was done based on valency because this formula with oxygen it completely depends on valency if you remember how we did criss cross this is where the valency number comes from right so all these groups he said they are related to valency now uh, the based on what he proposed they made something called a periodic law okay periodic law is a little important so you need to remember the statements common question so what periodic law states is that all the physical and chemical properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic weight by periodic we mean every certain interval they repeat okay according to him what is what is there over here hydrogen its property will repeat down here and next one again same all of these similar so this is the periods right so after you go across all of these elements you come back here this will have the same property as the one above okay so this is the modern periodic law now this is very important because uh, this is how the major periodic table came about so i'm going to show you the original periodic table that was made by mendeleev and that is this okay so here are the periods from 1 to 12 okay horizontally and the first group r2 o so if you see all of these form compounds with oxygen like this h2o li2o na2o now you go to the second one it's ro so beo beryllium oxide mgo magnesium oxide right it fits b is boron b2o3 al2o3 okay so this way he formed all of these you don't need to remember all of them just know that they were oxides okay now there are really important features to this table some of them the first important feature is this groups okay in his groups he was able to properly align all the properties of the element so hydrogen sodium uh, anything that comes in that order was generally having the same property and again the periods again this is also something that is new okay so overall they showed 12 over here but uh, with time it was modified a little bit so your modified table of mendeleev looks like this okay here is the first group r2o hydrogen lithium sodium potassium uh, rubidium all of them having same properties and again on the right column b okay and some of those horizontal periods are combined to form one so four is actually four and five combined so totally they were able to make eight uh, columns and seven rows okay so these uh, groups and periods were really uh, a breakthrough in making the periodic table the third thing is if you look at this table you will see there are some blank spaces okay these are left blank cuz this element was not known for example below boron there is 44 okay that time this element was not discovered but what mendeleev said is there is an element that we did not discover yet so instead of putting the next element that they knew so after calcium they knew titanium instead of putting titanium here he said i am leaving a gap because there will be some element discovered whose properties match with boron and anything that follows it and that is not titanium he knew titanium will fall in this place because it follows this property and not this so he left these gaps on purpose to show that new elements will be discovered and they are going to fit in that exact space so he made predictions based on this table he said okay so after boron this compound he named it as eka boron same way there is after aluminum the next one says eka aluminum and then there's another one from silicon called eka silicon 
he predicted properties of elements like these and he said they will be found and you see the properties are actually going to be quite similar and they were so uh, eka aluminum's properties were actually quite similar to what he said okay this was actually then element called gallium that was found later and very close match to their properties okay so uh these predictions were actually very new and they actually fit quite well so this is one very key thing we uh, one key feature of his table uh another important thing about his table is something called uh anomalous series so if you look at this table in some places we said this is an increasing order of atomic weights right but you'll see in some places it's not increasing if you look at column 5 at the bottom from uh, antimony that is 121 tellurium 127 but after tellurium it is 124 right this is not increasing order they put an heavier element first and a lighter element after okay he ignored sometimes this happened because he said the properties are not matching if you put them only in ascending always so he ignored the ascending order of weights here just so that the properties can match and he was correct selenium and tellurium actually have similar properties and boron and uh, iodine actually have similar properties so this is one another key feature he ignored his own rule but he actually made the correct choice and finally one more thing that his table helped us in correcting some atomic weights okay so back then atomic weight was based on calculation not exact measurement so they had few uh, elements like gold and indium whose weights were not correctly calculated but if you looked at his table and calculated the weights according to his table the measurements would come proper and they would actually fit the properties also based on what he had said so these are five really important uh, features of mendeleev's periodic table now however uh, there are some issues to this table also okay one simple issue being these uh, anomalous series what i said where the weights are not in ascending order although the properties matched when he switched them he could not explain why this is happening he could not tell why tellurium has to come before iodine so that explanation he did not have so that was one issue another issue was that in the groups in a and b it's not always a match in the properties for example uh, potassium k and copper cu they actually are not very similar in properties they are very different although both are metals they react very differently so even with, within these groups in in a and b sometimes the properties were not match okay just two issues but anyway uh, again in going further these issues were fixed and we came to the newer form of the periodic table so that's it for now this is actually a very important topic mendeleev's periodic table because it's the foundation for our latest periodic table so i'm going to stop here just remember the periodic statement and the major uh, features of this table it's a common question all right so that's it for now i'll see you in the next class and we'll continue from there if you have any doubts put them in the comments thank you very much